So with that well-deserved rest after dealing with those nefarious mummy dogs, it's now time we finally wrap up night two and head after our final soul for the evening. Now, currently, we haven't run into the final two new guests, and as such, we don't really know too much about them, so... Seems like a perfectly reasonable opportunity to start gathering some intel on them. And what better place to start gathering intel than with Gregory himself. Now, as per usual, we can talk to him directly, but we can also peek in on him to get a little bit more info. <laughs> and also, it allows us a little sneak peek into that great passive aggression that we've seen Gregory tout about so, so very well. The good news is that for the most part, this target is a little bit more simpler to understand than the mummy dogs. Who would you like to hear about? And one of the ways that it is simpler than the mummy dogs is the fact that only one of these two cactus people actually has the soul, and that's Cactus Gunman. Now, while the method that we're going to use to get the soul is a little bit easy, Cactus Gunman actually has a pretty interesting backstory. Somehow or another, he is a living cactus, who is the leader of a revolutionary army, and he is currently on the run, I guess from the Mexican government, and as such, he is a little bit on edge. Even though he is the, the head of a army, he is a bit of a spineless coward. At least that's what Gregory thinks. And Cactus Girl... Seems... Well, she's described as a little bit more imposing. Which is a bit strange to me, but yeah, she is Cactus Gunman's little sister. And she is... Insecure about fashion, but more importantly, she is apparently very adept at a lasso. Which makes it seem like she might be a threat to us. So we'll just have to keep an eye out for her. All in all, that really kind of points to the fact that... Well, I mean, we're going to have to scare him via loud noises. The thing is that... Well, there is another additional source of information from, well, I guess, Gregory's family that we really haven't been using. And to get to that, we're going to have to head back to the front lobby. Now, there is a room that I think I looked at in the first video, but didn't go into because it was locked at the time. Though now, we are easily able to get into the manager's office. And from what I can gather, this is where Gregory and James do go to sleep, though there isn't too much to the decor to really illustrate that. In fact, there's not really too much of interest in here outside of a, an additional book. And this separate book on the desk here. Which is not for us to keep, but instead is a diary written by James. Now, for the most part, we can kind of use this as information gathering if we don't really get any information from the guest. So we can see here he talks about Catherine and writing nonfiction or... A real point of interest, though, here is on day three. Seems he has mastered the art of ding-dong-door ditching, and has been using that against Cactus Gunman, more specifically, using this ding-dong-ditch method three times in a row, will cause the guy to go into absolute hysterics. And that sounds like a perfectly reasonable method to use against him, though... 
we might have a few issues with the mere fact as of right now, we have pissed off quite a few people in the hotel at this point. And that means it will become even more necessary to really stay on our toes and keep track of where everybody is. Especially when we aren't really for certain if they are going to be aggressive towards us, such as the Lost Doll. Now, we are just outside of her reach, and we can look inside on Cactus Girl in her very, very interesting room. Though we have been caught. I may ask, what are you doing? Normally, I am pretty good about not being caught by Gregory, though there isn't really any reason why we shouldn't just go inside. In all honesty, Cactus Girl has one of the more visually interesting rooms in the entire game. For all the effort that Gregory has gone through in other rooms, this one is a very wonderful western microcosm. And while it seems that Cactus Girl just goes through information we have already gathered ourselves, she does elucidate the fact that I guess she thinks we're part of the Mexican government chasing after her brother, and that she will go a little bit lenient on us because she has the home turf advantage and her brother has instilled, I guess, some morals upon her. My brother, I'll leave you alone for now. So that is exceedingly nice of her. And she is so nice, in fact, that she has an additional usage for us. Respect for my brother, I'll leave you alone for now. Because if we hit her up again, she will be willing to fill us in on some information. Which has been given to us in some part by Neko Zombie. But more so, she's willing to fill us in on status ailments, which might be a bit of a mystery to you if you've, if you've just initially been playing this game yourself, and some other special actions. Which is very nice of her, though it doesn't really help us in our current situation. I mean, I'm not too, too worried about Gregory out there. I'd don't think he'll mind if we knock, it's more of a question about whether or not that lost doll is going to be an issue. So, I guess it's time for a little bit of an experiment. Okay, yeah, she's, uh is more than likely going to be a threat to us. Which technically could be a problem since we have to knock on that door right next to her room. Good thing is that somehow or another we managed to strike it lucky and get here right as she's going back into her room. Which means we can lay our plan into action. Who's that? The one thing to keep in mind with Ding Dong Door Ditching is that you don't want to be waiting around the door whenever the occupant comes to check. Unscare me like that. And indeed, in this case, if you do happen to just be waiting around, that will trigger Mr. Uh, Cactus Gunman there to go running. Otherwise, though, this is a fairly simple soul to figure out how to get. Oh, 
Pooty is out to get me. Who, who are you? Just like that, we finally have our last soul for the evening. Just like taking candy from El Nino. Let's go with that. And while he is running scared, gives us a perfect opportunity to browse around his room. Got a nice Tex-Mex feel to it, along with some threatening images of ourselves. Apparently, though, he makes his rounds very quickly, and we are in a very bad spot. Needless to say, this could be a very, very sticky situation to get out of, if it wasn't for the fact that I have keen bartender knowledge and happen to know a little secret about the bar. Because you see, most second floor bars, believe it or not, have a escape chute in the back. Just a little something I learned from, I think, 30 years of watching Cheers. And while the Lost Doll and Cactus Gunman get a little drink on, back on the first floor, we can breathe a sigh of relief, take in the lovely crisp night air, and pat ourselves back on a job well done. Also, it never hurts to uh, pick up some herbs here. Not so much for the healing factor, but we can use them to buy more books in the store. On our way to finish up the evening, we do find ourselves a little interesting scene here in the dining room. Now, believe it or not, James is not wholesale evil. It seems more than anything, he's just a little bit lonely. And it seems that he would like Shub here to stay, if only to, you know, have a friend here. Which would be kind of endearing if the guy wasn't such a little asshole. Also, I would be a bit remiss if that was our only time spent up in the bar. So as it seems, the coast is pretty much clear. Figure why not head back up there and have a better look at what the bar has to offer. Outside of the very smoky decorum, does have some lovely bric-a-brac along the wall, some very interesting old, I guess, brochures, or not even sure what. It even has a jukebox, which takes a little bit of Fonzarelli magic to work. Or it takes a little bit of Fonzarelli, ma Fonzarelli magic to completely break. Also, I was kind of hoping that knocking on it a bit more would kind of fix it. That apparently doesn't work. So, without further ado, I think it is time we finally wrap up night two. We got a lot done. We met a whole lot of interesting racial stereotypes. And I think, uh, I think it's time we uh, take a little nap. Come on now! Give it up! 
throw away all them worries. Oh, it's you. Did you manage to pick up any souls? Oh, you only brought me one, huh? I take it? Hey, thanks a lot. Here, I'll stamp your card for you. Hey, you don't look so good. Yeah, this'll fix you right up. Uh, would you look at that? While we've been here jabbering, a whole bunch of new guests moved in, and they got souls too. Good luck there, buddy!